Good morning, St. Peter's family, and welcome to our online worship on this Palm Sunday. I know that we're all in different places, but that doesn't impact the power of the Spirit in your home, in this room, or wherever we may be. As we get ready to worship together today, I just have a few quick announcements. This being Palm Sunday and Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, uh, I want to encourage you to find your, your palms to wave this Sunday. Now, we could follow the lead of those who were actually uh, there with Jesus, um, and you can cut your own branches and, uh, from a plant in your backyard, or you can use a scarf or a napkin. Um, be creative. Uh, pick your palm and shout Hosanna this morning. Um, if you'd like to follow along with today's service, you can go to our website and download a PDF version of today's bulletin. And if you're following us on YouTube, please subscribe while you're here to be up to date on all of our streaming content and our worship playlists. And also while you're there, give us a quick hello in the chat box to your right of your screen. Um, as we go into this time of worship, I just want us to center our hearts as we uh, enter this time of worship of our God. Let's pray. God, you are good. We just thank you for this opportunity to gather together as a family. We thank you that you are here this Palm Sunday, this day of rest, this day of renewal, this day of Sabbath. God, I pray that you would pour into the lives of the people wherever we may be, God, in our homes, um, in our rooms. Uh, God, but most importantly, we just ask that you pour into our hearts this morning and reveal yourself in an amazing way as we give you honor we give you praise. We give you all the glory. In your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. All right, St. Peter's, let's worship together. I see the King of glory Coming down the clouds with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see his love and mercy Washing over all our sins The people sing, the people sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest Hosanna, Hosanna Hosanna in the highest I see a generation Rising up to take the place With selfless faith Selfless faith I see a near revival Daring as we pray and seek, we're on our knees, we're on our knees. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Yeah. 
Church, as we continue our time in worship, it's important for us to acknowledge the things that we've been holding on to, the burdens that we've been carrying around, and the sin that has gotten between us and God. Would you please join me in our prayer of confession? Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world.
In Christ's name we pray, amen. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as God is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because God first loved us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. As we meet in different locations together, we say, may God be with us all. As we turn to a, a time of sharing our invitations to connect and engage this morning, um, we do so um, being reminded that we have very unique opportunities before us to connect and engage in, in the current realities that we are experiencing. And so first and foremost, uh, I want to say welcome again to online worship. We're glad that we are in this space together. Um, what a gift it is to be um, worshiping God uh, this morning. Uh, you know, we are a praying community here at St. Peter's. Um, the life of prayer is kind of in our DNA and in our veins. And so if you have a prayer request that you would um, like to make known to us, that's a, a normal part of the fabric of our worship. And so we're inviting that in um, a different way during this season. Um, and you can either email prayer requests to a staff member or you can go to our homepage on our website and there is a prayer request link and simply choose that and submit a prayer request and we um, will be honored to pray with and for you um, in these days um, and weeks to come. Uh, secondly, you know, during this season of, of um, a new reality or at least uh, current realities, um, the easiest way to kind of um, keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on at St. Peter's and to stay connected and engaged with us is um, by accessing our website, uh, stpeterspress.org. Um, it's updated, and the homepage really has a lot of the, the uh, newer offerings, um, the kind of adaptations of offerings that we um, are extending during this um, coronavirus season. Secondly, um, you can subscribe to our um, email communications. And again, you can do that by going to our website. Um, we are sending out email updates um, frequently and regularly, as well as featuring um, unique offerings th uh, that are coming about during this season that are intended for um, you and, and anyone else that you would like to extend those invitations to. You know, we're going to be doing Holy Week and Easter um, at St. Peter's, albeit in a different way. Uh, different format. And so, again, I would invite you to watch our website and watch your email for uh, meaningful invitations um, for us to gather, to grow, um, to go, to be sent, to be the church for such a time as this. We're looking forward to um, some of the creative ways that we can um, journey through um, next week together. And finally, um, keep sending those pictures. Keep sending your pictures of, of you and your household, um, family members, people that gather with you on these Sunday mornings for online worship. Send those pictures to us. We are enjoying um, receiving them and sharing them with all of you. So please keep them coming our way. Uh, let us turn our, our hearts and our minds um, to our offering of our tithes and ourselves this morning as we um, gather in this space. My name is Tracy King Ortega, and I serve as Elder to Mission here at St. Peter's-by-the-Sea. I also serve as Regional Liaison for Central America. 
a mission coworker position with Presbyterian World Mission. Today, I want to briefly share about both a big picture denominational opportunity to give, as well as the importance to continue our general faith giving to support the ongoing work of our local church community that is St. Peter's by the Sea. During this time of crisis, with the COVID-19 pandemic threatening, we are reminded that the most vulnerable in our midst suffer first, most, and longest. One great hour of sharing has for over 70 years supported the most vulnerable amongst us. The three programs supported by the One Great Hour of Sharing, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, the Presbyterian Hunger Program, and Self-Development of People all work in different ways to serve individuals and communities in need. From initial disaster response to ongoing community development, their work fits together to provide people with safety, sustenance, and hope. I'd like to lift up one example where I've seen these funds being used. In El Salvador, our denomination is partnered with the Reformed Calvinist Church of El Salvador, also known as IRSIS. Though small in number, they are big in vision and commitment to the gospel. Grounded in their Reformed identity, they are always taking time to analyze and discern their call based on the context in which they serve. Recognizing the plight of migrants in their midst as an urgent reality around them, they solicited a grant from Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, PDA, to help in transforming part of their church offices into a transitional shelter for returned and deported migrants. Since July of last year, more than 80 migrants and internally displaced people have found temporary refuge there. This past February, while visiting El Salvador, I had the opportunity to speak with Juana, who recently made the difficult decision to give up her asylum claim here in the U.S. and return as a deportee to El Salvador because she had no way of coming up with a $25,000 bond set for her by the U.S. Immigration Court. Upon return, she was in a couple of different shelters where she felt discriminated against but then landed for a time in the shelter that our partner church, Irsis, is running. It was there that she received true hospitality and love. That kindness got her through and has enabled her to continue forward on her own, still in similarly precarious circumstances that pushed her out in the first place, but now with listening ears and a supportive community. Traditionally, the One Great Hour of Sharing offering is received during our Easter worship. Though we won't be physically together for our worship on that joyous day, we as the St. Peter's community are still committed to making a collective impact through this special offering. Your financial partnerships are crucial to our general faith giving and to the One Great Hour of Sharing. You can make your offering by going to St. Peter's press.org and clicking on the link the give link in the upper right hand corner and then a menu of online giving options will appear alternatively you can also mail contributions to the church's main office during these uncertain times we depend on our church faith family and god's grace to see us through my hope is that this time will be remembered as a time when each church unites to take care of one another and the community that surrounds it. Please give generously, knowing that God's faithfulness endures. God is with us, especially in times like these. We are the church together. Together we can make a difference.
I would like to invite you, if you have your Bible nearby or on your phone, to go ahead and pull up our scripture for today and read along. Um, Our scripture today is from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. I'll be reading the NRSV version. So um, here is our scripture reading. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near the door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Will you join me in prayer? Dear God, thank you so much for the blessing um, of the Bible, for, um, for the blessing of Jesus, and for this day, for Palm Sunday. I pray that your spirit would be here with me now and with each of us worshiping together across space and places and times, um, that you would draw us all together. I pray that um, your blessing would be on my words, that I would speak what you would want to be spoken. I pray that our hearts and our ears would be turned towards you and that you would speak um, to each of us um, through your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, it is so good to be here with you all, and um, what a special opportunity to be able to share with you a message on Palm Sunday. Um, The scripture I just read um, is one that is likely familiar to you if you have frequented church at all. It's one that we, that is recorded in all four of the Gospels, and that we Um, come to every year on this Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter. So um, it's a familiar one, and it's probably good that we revisit it every year because um, in this passage, in this uh, Mark version, but across all four Gospels, there is a lot (laughs) in just this short passage. There's a lot to unpack that could take a long time, so it's good that we get to do it over and over again. So I encourage you that this week, as we move through Holy Week, that you would take some time beginning with this, um, this passage from, um, from Mark and focusing on the triumphal entry um, to take your own time to study and see what God is speaking to you um, through this passage this week. Um, as I did that, as I was looking through um, what, um, what God was speaking this time through the, um, through the passage, um, what really struck me was how Jesus takes things that are ordinary and infuses them with the extraordinary. So our extraordinary God is the king of the very ordinary. Um, Jesus breathes life and joy and hope um, into things that are mundane and normal and average. Um, Jesus' whole ministry is full of this. He is at a wedding and a very normal problem of wine running out happens and he changes water to wine and makes it something extraordinary. Um, Jesus takes maybe the most ordinary thing of mud and changes it into a healing balm for a blind man. 
Um, Jesus teaches through stories of mustard seeds and um, lost coins and sheep, things that were around him and the people that he was teaching to. Um, He uses those things to demonstrate things that are incredible and unseen. Things that are around us and very seen and normal are used to explain the unseen. Um, And we have that same opportunity to access the things that are around us, to allow God to use those to speak um, and a- to speak to us and to access God's hope. Um, and fortunately for us right now, we have lots of opportunities <laughs> to uh, explore things that are monotonous and regular and ordinary. Um, our day-to-day lives right now in some ways are exceptionally different and unusual But in other ways right now, our lives are very, very ordinary and mundane. Um, I've heard people talk about kind of being Groundhog's Day, the movie, over and over again. Um, And also in a different way, people kind of going back to some basic things. Lots of people learning how to bake bread again or starting vegetable gardens. Um, People thinking about very basic needs, like do I have enough toilet paper? There are, um, in in the work world, people kind of consolidating and thinking about what's really important. Do I need to have that meeting? Can I write an email for it? Um, I know in my house, maybe our laundry has gone down a little bit because we're not changing any clothes, but we sure have a lot of dishes to do, (laughs) Um, all being home all day long. So um, it just feels like there is a lot of monotony right now and lots of ordinary things. Um, So the good news for us is that those are all opportunities um, for us to explore the extraordinary things that Jesus offers. So when we look at our scripture today about Jesus's processional into Jerusalem, it really embodies this idea about the ordinary and extraordinary together. Um, To give some context about um, parades um, during um, Jesus's time on earth, um, I looked a little into what kind of the notable cultural parades would have been like back then. And um, what their context would have been for parades really were military victory parades um, that the Roman Empire would have um, uh, offered and put together after a military victory. So um, depending on the size of the victory, how many people they um, conquered or how many deaths there were in a victory, um, they would have either a triumph parade that um, was for more than 5,000 casualties Or if it was less than that, it was only an ovation parade. Um, And on top of both of those triumphs and um, ovations were the imperial triumphs that Caesar really took um, that only um, the ruler could participate in. And I want you to kind of imagine what these parades look like. So these triumphs, there were musicians and people waving big flags. There were people carrying torches. Um, The person that was honored um, was at the center of the parade. There were people walking before and behind. Um, uh, He would ride in a golden chariot that was pulled by several horses. There's lots of really good ancient art kind of depicting this, if you want to go look at it. Um, And uh, I thought this was an interesting (laughs) tidbit. So not for Caesar, but for other military um, victors that got one of these parades, they would have someone that would walk alongside the victor and um, the honoree and um, kind of whisper in his ear to remind him that he was not a god. Because it was all so over the top, they needed someone there just to remind this person, you know, you're not actually a god. You're just like the best kind of person there is. So, um, With that in mind, I want you to imagine um, Jesus' processional into Jerusalem. When we hold those together, it's even almost hard to call it a parade or a a processional Um, because Jesus was riding on a colt with cloaks laid on top of it. Um, There were no flags, no torches, no musicians. Um, the only thing that was filling the air with sound were the shouts of the people that were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Um, But everything in Jesus' life up to this point, um, born in a stable, as an adult in his ministry, really living as a nomad, not owning anything, everything, everywhere he stayed or ate was borrowed or given, 
um, Jesus associated with the people on the outside of society, not the important people and power up front, but the people on the fringes. It all made a very clear message. Um, I am a king, but I am not that kind of king. Um, so even though Jesus' parade was only an echo of kind of these grand Roman triumphs, um, there's reason to believe that the people that were shouting um, alongside the road really believed that Jesus had come as their military savior, um, that he had come to smash and overthrow the ruling powers and to establish himself and his people as the ruling um, body in the land. The psalm that, they're, um, that we quote um, is from a conqueror's psalm, um, claiming for God to come and destroy enemies. Um, and so another clue that that's where people's minds were fixed comes a little later this week um, on Good Friday when some of those same crowds are calling for Jesus' crucifixion because it's become very clear that he is not a military victor. Um, he's a different kind of king. Um, Jesus' entire ministry is a repeated series of Jesus performing a miracle or offering um, a piece of profound teaching, um, followed by the, his disciples or someone else um, saying, what? <laughs> what did you mean by that? I didn't quite get it. <laughs> um, and then Jesus having to explain what he means um, and why the way that we think about things, our framework and perspective, um, is different from the way God sees things, is different from God's perspective. And then Jesus reorients us to what God's perspective is. So um, the reflection quote this morning um, that was, um, if you were able to print the bulletin, um, is, I'll quote them here for you too if you weren't able to do that. So the reflection quote is lyrics from a song called Take Me to the Alley um, by Gregory Porter. So I take no credit for having good taste in music because that all comes from my husband. <laughs> um, he introduces me to wonderful musical artists and it's something that we've come to enjoy to do together. We've gotten to see Gregory Porter perform a couple times. Um, and he, I really encourage you if you have a chance to, to look up um, this song and some of his others because um, hearing his music just really emphasizes this. But I'm gonna read the lyrics to you now. Well, they gild their houses in preparation for the king, and they line the sidewalks with every sort of shiny thing. They will be surprised when they hear him say, take me to the alley, take me to the afflicted ones, take me to the lonely ones that somehow lost their way. Let them hear me say, I am your friend. Come to my table. Rest here in my garden. You will have a pardon. I mean, it's just, it, it, the words touch me, but when you hear it to the music, um, it's really moving. And I just, for me, it captures so well um, this idea about where um, God's heart is oriented. You know, our human nature and our inclinations haven't changed much over the last two millennia. Um, it seems that we're almost inescapably drawn to things that are larger than life um, and shiny and polished. Uh, the bigger and the better thing, being at that it place. Um, and Gregory Porter's lyrics here really capture that, that we focus our energy on making things shiny and presentable and comfortable and those actions themselves aren't really the problem. Um, what I see as being the problem is that all the shining and presenting really are to cover up a mess inside. A lot of times we're spending all this energy to make things look okay, that we're doing all the right things, things look okay, but on the inside, things are a mess, whether that's kind of in a big kind of, um, bigger scale, whether either with a culture or an institution or a group or with us personally. Um, you know, I think about Instagram pictures and I am, or other pictures we put on social media. I know I'm guilty of this. I'm trying to get a picture of something and I kind of push the mess out of the, especially when my kids were little, maybe getting a cute picture of them on the floor. I kind of 
you know, push the mess out of the outside of the frame to get the good picture. But the reality is, <laughs> you know, the rest of my house is a mess. But for some reason, I don't want people to see that, even though they know that, you know, if you're a parent of young children, that things are probably a mess. Um, you know, we do that with our families. We put on this really good um, outer picture that things are together, we're happy, we're good. But a lot of times that's not the case. Things are falling apart inside. Um, I think about students who um, are hustling so hard and getting excellent grades in varsity sports, um, are you know, on the honor list and doing the volunteer work, but are suffering deeply on the inside and um, how painful that is to put up this face on the outside, but on the inside, things are kind of a mess. And here's the thing, is that Jesus is interested in the inside of things. Um, Jesus is looking for the real places where people are hurting and lonely and have lost their way. And that kind of sounds like a lot of people right now. So the very good news is that it's in those spaces and those very hard but ordinary feelings that Jesus can work the extraordinary. Um, I look at Jesus' Last Supper, you know, our communion celebration and sacrament, as one of the most concrete examples of what it looks like for our extraordinary God to take something very everyday and regular and make it something more, both on a surface level but also on a very deep personal level. Um, changes are made to the people that were in that room with Jesus, to his disciples, his closest friends, um, but also to each one of us now, all this time and um, so far away from where it originally happened. Um, with the simple parts of a meal that were already on the table, Jesus transformed those ordinary goods into the sacred. And today, when we take communion, we'll get to participate concretely in Jesus making that very ordinary thing extraordinary. Um, even more so uh, this week, since we're in different places and we will be taking the elements of bread and juice from our own tables the same way that Jesus did. Um, and the way that Jesus, this extraordinariness um, of God that works through Jesus, um, really happens on two levels. The first is broader and more visible, like in today's scripture, that um, Jesus can present what a humble king looks like, that to take something extraordinary, something that's ordinary, like a parade, and make it extraordinary. Um, Jesus did that at wells and on boats, on hillsides, and in a table in an upper room with his friends. Um, Jesus brought the incredible into everyday spaces. And that second level that Jesus works through is the more personal one. In each one of Jesus' interactions with people, whether it was his inner circle of disciples or someone who just crossed his path once, um, Jesus looked beyond what the people were presenting to the world and addresses them straight to their heart. That same reality applies to us now. We do not have to hustle for our worthiness with God. When it comes down to it, Jesus is clear that God is concerned with the state of our hearts. Our work is to turn down the noise in our lives and to let go of the shiny things that feel like they make us worthy and to open our hearts to be seen and changed by the love that God has for us. Um, and it's through that um, kind of vulnerability that God takes um, our everyday ordinary inner lives and uses them to do extraordinary things in this world. God calls us to follow Jesus' example, to love and be faithful in the most ordinary of ways. And I really feel like we've seen that in the weeks that have um, led up to today. Um, about how people have really stepped into the ordinary relationships that maybe had kind of been on the sidelines and have done 
some very ordinary things that are extraordinary, whether that's caring for neighbors or um, choosing to set them, their own priorities aside for the greater good of people. Um, people you know, making homemade masks to keep people safe or um, people doing drive-by birthday um, celebrations for kids that are home. Um, I've definitely cried a few tears this week watching um, just the goodness that, is, that, um, that has been able to come out of um, a lot of um, difficulty. Um, so when we faithfully create this space for the Holy Spirit to be present in the everyday, we are then opened up to the possibilities that God has to offer. We have access to the goodness and satisfaction and deep joy that come from a life lived with Christ. So I want you to think um, and to feel what it means for you to do that this Holy Week. Um, there's a lot of ground to cover between today and Easter next Sunday. Um, so I want you to take some time and really think and feel about what it means to step into the ordinary. And what does that look like for you to make room for the Holy Spirit, to breathe into the open spaces of your ordinary so that God can use you to do the extraordinary. Amen. As we uh, gather around the communion table this morning, I am, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that we are continuing with the celebration of this sacrament because it matters. It matters. It's meaningful to us as a community of faith. Um, as we gather around table this morning, we are reminded um, of the words that our great uh, reformers of our faith um, said, that this table is a very visible sign of an invisible grace. That is to say that uh, this table, these very ordinary elements of, of bread and juice, um, they represent an extraordinary means of, of grace, of God's presence, God's real presence when we come to the table. God meets us in this place. We also find ourselves um, standing with the crowds um, uh, on that first Palm Sunday, maybe some of us shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna um, to the highest. Um, some of us um, know what is to come with the events of Maundy Thursday and Good Friday um, before we um, can reach the celebrations of Easter Sunday. And what um, feels uh, kind of set apart this year is that we don't seem to have a definitive endpoint to um, this experience of Lent um, because life kind of feels like um, we're living Lent out loud. And, you know, the great uh, preacher and pastor, Peter Story, the Methodist preacher from South Africa, um, a real hero of faith of mine, he, he, he once wrote something um, that uh, kind of sticks with me. Um, and he, and, he, and he, th he wrote this. Um, he said, you know, we should resist every temptation to play church while the world bleeds. And so... Um, as we do with every communion service, as we do with every worship service here at St. Peter's, we always um, kind of posture our hearts in prayer, prayers for ourselves, prayers for the people um, around us, prayers um, for the, this world that God so deeply loves. Um, so will you join me in prayer? God, you are uh, a God um, who does extraordinary things through very ordinary means. Um, we thank you that um, we have heard again this morning of Jesus being an extraordinary king in the midst of the ordinary. And so, God, we have many ways that um, our hearts are grateful, that we are thankful for the resources um, at our um, disposal, the resources that we have within our reach um, of people and um, housing and um, money and food and community and all of those things that um, help us um, navigate our way through um, this present day. So God, help us not to lose sight of um, having hearts of gratitude for the ways in which um, we are thankful for your blessings in our lives. And, and while we are grateful, um, we are also mindful and prayerful um, that we want to be people who are responding to 
um, the needs of this world in ways that um, show and communicate your love for this world. So may we who are um, merely inconvenienced, may we remember those whose lives are, are at stake in this moment. May we who have no, no or maybe little risk factors, may we remember those who are vulnerable, maybe those who are most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home, may we remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, may we remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our vacations and our trips, may we remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, may we remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home, may we remember those who, who have no home as fear grips our, our city, our, our nation, and this world. God, let us choose love because um, in the event, uh, the life and the ministry of Jesus, in the event of the cross, you show us that love wins. So let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us uh, yet find ways to be a loving embrace, um, your loving embrace to our neighbors. God, draw near to us as we pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we gather at this table this morning, let us be reminded of the words that Jesus said to his friends, his followers, on the night of his betrayal. After giving thanks, he, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and pouring it, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of all. Friends, every time we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we do so proclaiming the death of the Lord until he comes again in glory. Indeed, these are the gifts. These are the gifts for the people of God. As we take communion together this morning, um, we trust that you have taken time to prepare your own table, but if not, you could um, press pause and take a moment to um, grow and grab um, whatever bread um, that you have around your house, whatever you can use for juice around your house, and then bring it back and sit with us as we um, take this sacrament together. As I and break the bread and dip it in the cup, I'd invite you to do the same. And then after we take of the bread and the cup, um, a response together would be, thanks be to God. So this is um, the body of Christ given for you. And this is the cup of salvation given for you. Take and eat and drink.
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, you um, indeed are a God who is good and present and faithful, and we are grateful um, for the ways in which we see and experience you in our lives, the ways in which we know you and know that you are Lord. And God, we um, trust that you invite us. You say, come, come to me, come and receive, come and be fed. And so we have come. Um, together in this unique space. Um, we have received and we have been fed, and now you say, go, go, go and be your church. Go to be your hands and feet in this world that you so deeply love. So God, we trust that you go with us and that you will continue to speak to us, for we are listening. We love you and we thank you for loving us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
So as we um, finish our time of worship here together, I offer this blessing to you. As we journey through this week, while we mostly stay in place, um, we'll move from waving palms to the washing of feet, the breaking of bread, the arrest and death of Jesus. It's quite a journey for a single week. So may every moment that we walk through these days be with Jesus. May we see the world through Jesus' eyes and be moved to act as Jesus did. May you experience the extraordinary love our God has for you and this world in your everyday, ordinary moments. And may God, who blesses and keeps you in love, whose face shines upon you with grace from above, and who looks on you with joy, may this our God, three in one, give you peace. Amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, are Christ. What a beautiful name. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name.